All right, so I'm gonna make another video of preparing point shoes, um, just because I haven't done one in a long time. Uh, this is sort of the pair I would normally wear from Freed, because um, I mostly wear Suffolk, Sonnet, and then Freed. So, because of all the stuff being shut down for a while, Freed's production of shoes has been kind of like um, down because they had to shut their factories down. So I haven't been able to get my shoes for a while from Freed, like my maker and everything. So this is not exactly what I would wear. This was someone else's, um, you can see like their specifications that they ordered. Um, so it's a little different than what I would wear. So this may be a little different than what I would normally do, but this was like a $20 pair of shoes instead of like the 110 they normally are and it works. So these are very hard compared to mine. Like mine are not normally that hard. Mine are normally, um, that's not even mine either. Hang on. <laughs> mine are normally like this and they're very, these are being glued right now. So that's why they're very gross looking and soft because I'm trying to make them last longer. Um, so these, also the one thing these have that mine don't, which can be an advantage in some ways is they have this elastic drawstring, which I hate. I like cotton drawstrings. Um, these like pull on my heels too much, but the one thing I would like these for is for freeds. I have to darn the tips of them because they're never quite flat enough for me. So when I cut off the extra, I save it. And then I use that to like darn around the edges and give me a, an extra platform to darn with. And then it also helps the darning hold up longer. Um, I think I already did videos a while back on just the like sewing and the darning stuff because that's really long and nobody really wants to watch that. So I will do that, but I'm probably just gonna do a time lapse of that. So you don't have to actually sit and watch me sew them. Um, but so these are really hard. So the first thing I'll do, cause you can see they're very rounded on the top. The first thing I'm just gonna do is step on them. So I'm gonna put this microphone down because it might not work and then you'll hear the crunching. But and now they're much flatter so they're much flatter now than they were before which makes them fit my feet shape better and then they're a little softer too and then I'll still mess with them a little bit just to make them nice and soft here and then what I do is I will bend the shank so let me soften these a little bit first too So I like to bend it. I know for me, I personally like to bend it like right about where the fish mark is. So I wear fish maker and a four double X. Um, I usually wear a deep vamp. These are a little different, but um, so I usually will pull the shoe away. And then this one does not seem to have a pin. So I don't seem to need to pull a pin out. And then we're gonna bend it really good. We're gonna bend it the other way. And just for reference, I'll show what it looks like if I try to stand on it before I've done that and after, just because <laughs> it's different. I don't think, on these I did already mark which one's right and left because I already messed with them a little bit, but I had broken them in, so. Okay, so the right one I did the stuff to the bending bit and everything which it still isn't perfect because I haven't done everything and then the left one I have not bent at all so I can't and my left foot's my good foot too so that's they still need a lot granted these are much harder shoes than I would normally wear so because the paste in these since they're special ones I think is a lot harder I can tell from just how they feel so if I need to soften them more if I wear them for a little bit and they still need more then I will usually take a little bit of water and just like kind of soften around here where it usually is too hard for me but generally in freeds, I have to put glue. I usually will wear them first and kind of like get used to them and then I'll put some glue down in the tip of the shoe and then I'll put it right along here on the arch just to help hold it a little better. Um, but yeah, on these, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip these off because I already tied them where I want them. And then I'll save those to use for darning later.
Okay. All right. So these I don't even really need to three quarter because there isn't really an extra shank to pull out in these. I think they're already three quartered, so um, I don't have to do as much. I just really need to bend them. And then that just makes them bend with my feet more since I don't have much arch to my feet. Okay. So let's see, what are we going to do next? So I normally on Freed's, I don't have any right now, so I'm just going to use the elastic I already have. This is actually the Freed elastic, but I usually like the mesh elastic on these. I don't know why I just do. But since this is what I have, this is what I'm going to use. Um, so just to measure it, put my toe pad on. These are also, since they're someone's specials, they're also cut down a little bit, I can feel, which is good because I need that anyway. Um, but what I'll do is I'll take the elastic and stretch it around and then kind of judge where I need to cut it off from there. And sometimes I sew them and they're still too loose and I'll just have to sew them tighter than that. So I'm gonna cut this off. And then I just measure it for the other foot because my feet for the most part are pretty similar in what I need. Okay, and that's extra elastic. And then I just buy ribbon in bulk because it's a lot cheaper over time to do that. I really should do it with elastic too, I just haven't. And then I have one piece that I've already cut that I just leave with it, and that way I know each time how much ribbon to cut. So I'll cut two of the, actually four of these, because obviously I have multiple sides. So that's my guide one. I'm gonna cut three more. I also prefer the stretch ribbon, so this is the stretchy satin ribbon. I don't like the plain satin ribbon because I have like no instep and everything, so I like the a lot, the ribbons to be like really tight against my feet. Otherwise, if I use like satin ribbon, it like gaps a lot on mine, so I don't like that one. All right, and then. keep the ends of the ribbon from fraying, we light the ends. So. Just singe the ends a little bit just to keep them from fraying because that's a mess. You can obviously buy a much smaller lighter than this. I just, I'm afraid of fire, so I use this. If you need to do it with your elastics, you can. I've never found that I've really needed to do that, so I don't. All right. And so now I'm gonna sew them. So I'm just gonna do a time lapse of that because nobody really needs to see how I'm sewing them. I think I've done it before and there's way better videos on YouTube for that. So um, yeah, I'll be back in a minute with that.
All right, so now they're all sewn. So now what I need to do, I will darn them eventually, <laughs> not today. Um, but what I still need to do is cut the ribbons. So, and these elastics feel a little loose, so I may end up re-sewing them a little tighter, but they looked really tight, so I thought we were good. <laughs> magic. <laughs> oh, sorry. So what I'm going to do is after I tie them, I will cut off just the excess so that the knot's not giant. So, and then I can tuck it under and make it look nicer. So I'll do that on this pair. And then I will probably reburn the edges of these if I need to, but. All right, so they still aren't quite ready because I still need to darn the tips, but that's what they'll look like when I'm done with them. So they're still not quite ready, but. And that's it. Okay, so really annoyed about this. I had filmed this whole little section right here already with a different camera and somehow the mic port didn't work and I had no sound from that whole clip. So I don't exactly remember what I said, but of course since then I did darn the shoes that I was talking about. So they're already done now at this point. Um, so, and even my other pair that I was like, well, I could show these, I already darned those too. So what I was going to show you is that, because that's the next step in my process, is this is a different pair of Freeds. These were studios that I tried um, and I lowered the vamp on myself. But basically when you get them, they kind of look, um, they're very rounded. Um, on the bottoms, they're not really flat. They don't stand on their own well. And once you darn them, and you put, let's see, I'm trying to see, I have a mirror behind my camera because this doesn't have a flip screen. Um, it like flattens out the bottom. So basically why you would darn your point shoes is there's a few reasons. Um, for me, honestly, all of the reasons work. A lot of it is stability, especially with Freeds. I don't darn my Suffolk's because they're very flat. I never really need to. I darn these because they don't feel flat and like they're not gonna stand up on their own if I don't. To be fair, these don't stand up great on their own either. I don't even know if my other ones do. Yeah, there we go. So like I've darned these and they will stand up on their own. So that's like what you want ideally. These probably don't because so I did just darn these today. These are the ones that I was doing in the video earlier. But the reason these don't is because in addition to providing stability with balance and turning, I also use the darning and some people do this too to put my feet in a better position. So I have a tendency to sickle. So I purposely darn towards uh, or heavier on the outer corner, like where my pinky toes will be. So this is my right shoe. So I darn more towards where the pinky toe is going to be so that it will push my foot towards the big toe. And then I did the opposite on the other one so that essentially it's pushing my shoes over a little bit, not that, that's extreme, but just to kind of help give me a better placement. Um, some people will darn to make their platforms more pitched forwards um, so or pitched backwards I think so if they go too far forwards things like that I personally don't like that I like a very flat platform but I know that's why some people do it as well and I personally like to use the little piece of elastic because I do feel like let me see if I can show this well I do feel like this little piece of elastic that I have taken from this when I cut my elastic drawstring up here I cut it and I used that as my base to sew around 
And I feel like that really helps give it a good platform to balance on, uh, for one thing. But also, as you dance on the shoe, the darning is going to flatten out and you have to re-darn. And you still might have to with this, but I do feel like it holds up better. Um, because another part that we obviously want about the, her, another reason that we like the darning, wow, I can't talk today, is because it extends the life of the point shoes. So you have another barrier between your shoe and the floor and that helps one hold the satin together on the end, but it also helps to put less pressure on the box so that the box will last a little longer too and it doesn't go soft. But what I do to darn, I basically use this big thick like craft thread that I got at um, Michael's. Um, I just bought, I think these do say darning needles, but they're just straight needles. I don't know if you can even see that, but they're just straight needles and I have a thimble in there mostly for darning gainers if I which I've done occasionally on like the really narrow boxes but I really don't use them for that either um, but yeah I pretty much just use that and I double it up and now I'll do a time lapse of me sewing them which I already have made in it it went okay I didn't film it as a time lapse because I didn't want it to be so compressed that you couldn't see anything and then it was really hard so you can enjoy some beautiful music that I've put behind these time lapses which is actually Katherine Morgan playing her Disney piano music because I love it and I feel like it's very relaxing <laughs> so enjoy that I hope I'm in focus. I'm, I have a mirror behind me, but I can't really see around it. So anyway, so these are now darned. I don't know how well it'll focus on. Okay, so this is what I mean by I darned around the tip and the platform. So it just makes it more solid. Now since this is my left foot, I have it marked for left. 
So I purposely darned heavier on the outside here because that will be where my pinky toes sit and it will kind of push me towards my big toe, which is what I want. So we'll see how they look now. Hopefully I'm back in focus. Yep, looks like I am. Good. This camera is not necessarily made for video. It's more a photo camera. It's the Canon 5D Mark IV with a very, very nice Sigma 35 millimeter lens on it, which is now my favorite setup ever for photography. But this camera does not have a flip out screen, which was the advantage of getting like the 60, but basically the 5D apparently is still a far superior camera, especially for photos, like all the things that they tried to do new with the 60, I guess, weren't as good. Um, at least that's what I've been told by multiple people. Some people still love it and that's great, but I just decided, you know, this is what all my friends that do really professional photography have and they have not liked upgrading. So, and this is cheaper because it's the older model. So anyway, we're going to try these. And also both of my leotards in this video are from Delalo Milano, which is like my new obsession. I only have two because they're really expensive and one of them was given to me but that's my favorite thing now. And then both skirts are from Ballet Skirts by Lucinda. Um, this one is actually a reversible one. I have short, my short tights, but so it's both skirts. But anyway, so these are what they look like now. I still have not glued them because I don't feel the need to yet. Let me see if I can give you guys a better view of just the shoes because that's really all you need now at this point. And get my mic wire out of the way. So now that they're darned, they're still not perfect. Like I still haven't done much in them, but they're not too bad. So I do think the darning also just makes it easy. Well, obviously it makes it easier to balance, but it makes me feel more secure if I'm doing any sort of balancing or turning. Um, I think it also just looks nice. It extends the line. I don't have good feet. <laughs> As you can see, that's my good foot and that's, that's all we got. And this is my bad foot. I just don't, I don't have much of an instep or ankle mobility. So this is what we got. But yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with how these turned out. The elastics might need to be tightened, I can't tell, but I'm liking them, so. Yeah, these will be good. They're still very hard. When I glue the shoes, what I like to do for me personally, I will glue right about where the maker mark is because that's where my arch bends. And that's where I want extra support. So I want the shoe to still be more supportive through there, but then be nice and soft there. So I will glue right here on the outside. And then I will glue down in the box, basically down along the tip of the box and up a little bit into the sides, but I don't usually go too high. I do like a good strong wing, which is this part right here but at the moment they're still good. So um, I like to be able to roll through Demi Point really well, which these shoes are pretty, fairly soft, so they do. And at the moment the box is still very, very hard, but this goes soft and that's why I put glue down in here to help harden it up and keep it lasting longer. Okay, um, I might as well just show you guys how I glue the shoes, but I also forgot one really important thing. Um, I skived down the bottoms, the sole of the shoe to make it flatter so that when you're balancing on flat you can stand flat um, so I just take I really need a new one of these I just take an exacto knife let's get all this out of the way and then always go away from your hand and mine is very dull now at this point so I really need to get a better one um, and I just shave down the shoe all along the outer edges. This usually goes a little smoother, but I just, my knife, my, yeah, my knife here is getting very not good. <laughs> so I really need a new one. Um, I just keep forgetting to go get one. But yeah, I'm not gonna show you all of it because you don't need to sit here and watch me carve down my shoe for however long it takes me to get this right today. But um, yeah, and then I'll try and carve down a little bit on the heel too, because the heels do stick up a little bit. 
Oh, that just reminded me of the other thing I do to my shoes, and so I'm going to show you that too. Oh my goodness, I am so... It's been so long since I've really prepared a pair because I've taken a couple months off that I kind of forgot all the things, and I'll remember them when I go to dance, but apparently I forget them when I'm preparing them for a video. So I'll go grab that in just a second here. Okay. So, I don't know how well you can see it, but compared to the other shoe, I have like turned down the sides a bit. Um, so, That one is pretty good. And then I kind of explained how I'm gonna, I'll explain how I'm gonna glue these and I'll glue just one shoe just to show you guys cause then I'll use the other shoe to show you the other thing because I don't feel like waiting for the glue to dry in between doing this. <laughs> so basically I use jet glue. Um, I know that some people like to use shellac. Um, I've heard of some professionals even using just super glue because they said it's just as good but I just like jet glue. You should be really careful with it though because like it glues like instantly and it's also like got fumes too. So like when you're putting it down in your point shoe, it'll look like it's smoking sometimes. <laughs> but either way, I put my glue right where the maker mark is on my shoes. So I put it right about here and then I'll put it just down in the box, completely in the box and like up along inside the box. Like I'll put it down here and up a little bit in here. I don't usually do the wings all the way up here because I like a good wing, but I don't want it to be so stiff that it doesn't bend like through demi point and stuff. So as the shoe dies, I will put a little more towards that area, but in the beginning, this is the only thing I do. So I'm gonna put a little bit. And you can always add more glue, so. So I will put it like right about like that on my shoe if that helps make sense. And then we'll glue down into the shoe. So I'll put the tip down in, just let it do its thing down there. And you just gently squeeze it. You don't have to do a lot. All right. So I don't know how well you can see down into the shoe there. I'm trying, but I'm also looking in a mirror because I can't do this any other way. I don't know if that's working at all, but I basically glued down in the shoe. So the other thing that I do for freeds, I don't have to do this with any others. This stuff, I think it's, you can get it at like the pharmacies anywhere, but I think it's called Cobain. It's just like a very, um, it's like a bandagey type material, very stretchy and it's very soft. And I'm gonna use my shoe that I haven't glued yet. What I will do, this pair, like I said, I didn't have to take a shank out because this is a custom one that someone apparently already had it cut down. So there isn't an extra shank. I will still usually bend this a little bit just to give it a little more mobility. Um, but then, because this is very hard on your heels when you're standing in them all day, I put this, like a couple layers of this around that. So I will, and I learned this, I can't remember which professional was talking about it on Josephine's channel on the point shop. Um, but yeah, you just put it around the heel and just wrap it around. And you can even wrap it a little higher and wrap it around that top a little more where it really digs in. And you can always add more to that too. But I do that and then that gives me a little bit of cushion on the heel and it doesn't really add much to the shoe, but it like really helps give you a little bit of cushion to stand on. That's the last thing I do. <laughs> so now I'll shave down this shoe, glue it, and then put the Cobain in this shoe, and then, then they will be completely good to go. I am pretty much gonna stick to doing ballet videos, I think, from now on. As much as I liked talking about photography stuff, that was where I got a lot of just unpleasant comments and things that I just don't wanna deal with. Um, not that I don't get those in ballet too, but like, I don't know, I just, I didn't enjoy the people debating what I was saying on my photography videos because, you know, photography is about art and so is ballet. It's your interpretation of art. Now, both have their own technical sides too. Ballet is a very technical art form, but there still is, you know, um, artistic interpretation of everything. 
and I had people saying on my photography videos things like I was talking about what I was going to use in Disney World and someone was like I just don't understand why you feel that you need to have shallow depth of field for Disney World photos that's stupid and I'm like actually it's not because it's the type of photos I like to take and I did take a lot of very artistic ones with like blurred out backgrounds which is what I like um, anyway not to go on a rant, but that's why I've kind of decided I'm going to stick to ballet videos. I am doing one more this week, which is really exciting. Um, I'm doing the shoot this week, so you guys will have to stay tuned for that. But it is a video where I've got one of my ballet friends from Dela is going to be my model and dancer. And I'm basically gonna do a whole video explaining the best ways to photograph dancers because I can't show that well because I don't have the technique, the feet, all of that to do everything properly, whereas Tiffany really would, being a professional dancer. So I'm going to be the photographer, but I'm also going to be doing a video with it to kind of explain, okay, these are the things you want to look for when you're photographing dancers and all that kind of stuff that I think is helpful and there isn't much of that out there. Um, and I think having a dancer's perspective on that too will help because I can ask her, hey, are there any other things that you wish people knew if you're doing photos and things like that? So stay tuned for that. I don't know, the video might come out next week because I'm filming it this week, so we'll see. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any comments or anything. Um, and stay tuned for the next one. Bye.